Bibles, or get your iPads. Hold your Bible up, Mary. You got your Bible? Let me see it. Stick it straight up in there. If you got your iPhone and that's your Bible, hold it up in there. Hold them all up in there. Come on. Stick them up. Stick them up. Y'all find Isaiah 55. Real important. Scripture we looked at last week. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Find it. Find it. Mark it. Get you, if you got you a, a pretty Bible that you don't want to mark in, leave it at the house and go up there and buy you one that you can mark in. Amen? <laughs> when you come to Circle J, you need to bring your using Bible, <laughs> not the one that you want to keep looking all pretty. It stays on your shelf and you can read it by yourself. But when you come to Circle J, bring a using Bible so you can highlight it and mark in it and, and, and use it. Take this scripture home with you today. Chew on it. Isaiah 55 verse 9 through 11. I want to ask everybody, and you'll understand why I'm doing this right now, to stand to your feet for the reading of God's holy word. It's going to be something special today. I want you to stand to your feet. Isaiah 55, starting in verse 9. We read this last week. I just want to go back and pick up kind of where I left off. As the rain and the snows come down from heaven and do not return into it or to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish and so it yields seed for the sower and the bread and bread for the eater and keep reading in verse 11 it's, God says so the word that goes out of my mouth it will not return to me empty your translation may say it won't return void but will, his word will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose in which I have sent. Lord Jesus, we come to you as we have opened your holy word. I pray in the name of Jesus that we take the word of God with us today and it's not left on a screen and it's not left in this building, I pray in the name of Jesus that you take your words and you implant them in our hearts and we walk out of here with the power of the word of God implanted in our lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus, cultivate our souls. In the name of Jesus, cultivate our minds. In the name of Jesus, cultivate our hearts to receive the seed that you're planting in us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Have a seat. I appreciate so many people coming out during this time. It's a powerful time for us to come and spend this time in the Word together. So what's God saying here? Look at this. He's saying as the rain produces life 
on the earth, he's saying the word of God is producing life in us. You see that? Look at that. As the rain produces life on the earth, so the word of God is producing life in us. Y'all got that? You understand that? Also, you got to understand, though, Satan can understand that just like you can. Satan understands that God makes the comparison <laughs> that just as rain replenishes the word or the earth, his word replenishes and renews and makes us grow ourselves. So Satan knows that. Look at this. Look at it. If Satan can, if he can, he'll do everything he can. If Satan can take the word from you, he will take your life from you. If Satan can just keep you away from the word, he can keep you from growing. He can keep you from the Lord. And if he can keep you away from the word, he can take your life away from you. As humans, Satan knows how to pull our strings and how to get us busy. Amen? And how to get us distracted. Amen? And how to get us discouraged. Amen? How to get us angry and worried and mad and fearful and all this stuff. He knows how to do that. Amen? Amen. And he knows that the Word of God according to what God said, is the link. It's the key. So to God, he says that at some point in your life, if you know Jesus Christ, you got to start doing something with the Word of God. James 1, 25 says, says that, but everyone who looks at the perfect law, the law of liberty that gives freedom, he says, not being one who forgets about the Word. But do, being a doer of the word. It says you'll be blessed in your doing. So when we get busy and we walk out of church and the seed of God. See, I'm a farmer right now. All I'm doing is throwing some seed right now. And if you take the word with you, it's implanted with you. But if the word of God stays on that screen right there. You've been robbed. Satan done snatched it away from you. If the word of God is in your Bible and your Bible gets closed and you never look at it again during the week, then it's not implanted in your soul. Now what I'm talking about today is I believe what God wants to happen in the restructuring of the church. Where we come and we listen to his holy word. And that's about as far as it goes. And there's not a one of you here that are born again that want to honor God. Amen? But there's not a one of you here, including myself, that don't struggle with honoring God. And you know how we honor God? Is being a doer of the word. That's how we honor God. When he says do something and we leave it on a screen, does that honor God? Yes or no? No. It's got to be implanted in our hearts. Jesus knew this was going to be a struggle. And so what I'm going to do today is open the doors, open, clean off some windows that are in front of you. I'm going to let you see some things that Satan has hidden from you for years and possibly even generations. Today, today, very likely, most positively is the greatest message that you've ever heard me preach. It will change your life 1,000%. Today's message is not just a little bitty deal that you hear a little bitty Todd Hervey preach. These are not my words. They're breathed out of heaven. And they are nurtured and unfolded by Jesus himself. Scaring you a little bit, huh? (laughs) Let's look at and see what the Bible says. If you could, turn in your Bibles. To Matthew chapter 13. 
Jesus says how hard it's going to be for you and for me to honor God with God's word. He tells us how Satan is going to destroy our lives, how he is going to keep us from the word of God, how he's going to snatch it away from us. And we all in the agriculture industry understand what a farmer has to do to plant the seed. And Jesus tells a parable, a story. And he, what he does is he compares the word of God to a little seed. A little seed is powerful. Amen. I cut an apple open last week. I said, we can count how many apple seeds are in this apple. But we cannot tell how many apples are in a seed. Amen. God's in control. And so that's the way the word of God is. And so he uses this parable. He says, a farmer in verse 2, Matthew 13. Y'all with me? A farmer went out, sow a seed, plant a seed. And, and as he was scattering his seed, some of the seed, Jesus said, fell on a path. And the birds came and they ate it up. What Jesus says later on, he explains his parable. And what he says is that's when Satan snatches it from you. That's when it hits a screen and you don't mark it down in your Bible. That's when it hits a screen and you look at it and you don't bring your Bible to mark it down and make sure you take it with you. That's when it hits a screen and you don't go back and listen to the Word of God again. That's when it hits the screen and you say, boy, that's good, and you shout amen in church, but you don't take nothing to the house with you. The Word of God is presented to you. And I'm sowing it to you. But as soon as you hit the steps out there, you leave the word of God right here. And Satan done snatched it from you. That's what, how Satan affects us. Anybody got a good memory where when, when somebody speaks the word of God and you remember it real good? Stick your hand up there and be loud and proud. Come on. Got one, two, three. Little kid, he's six years old. He's smarter than I am. I can't do that. I have to write it down. There's a few of you can get her done. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I can't do that. I have to write it down. I look in the scripture. I meditate on the word of God. I go back and look at it over and over and over again. But Jesus is saying he plants the word of God and Satan robs. And, of course, it never comes up. Keep reading. And so then some of the seed, he says, falls on a rocky place. Falls on a rocky place. And the ground, the heart, and the mind, and the soul is not plowed right. And it's not ready to receive it. And maybe it gets in there and maybe you take it home with you and you look at it once. But then it just kind of doesn't get watered and it doesn't get nurtured. And it maybe starts to grow in your life and you say, yes, God, I need to do that. Yes, God, I want to do that. And then things get busy and you don't. Take care of it, and you leave the seed alone. And here it is. It springs up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came and the cares and the struggles and things come in your life, and the sun came up and plants were scorched, and your soul wasn't ready for, to receive it, the, the, the soil of your life wasn't ready to see receive it. Keep reading. It says, and then it withered because it had no root. It takes time to grow a root. Can't happen overnight. And then another seed fell among the thorns, which grew up, and then the thorns choked it out. The weeds came in and choked it out. And so what he's saying here is the Holy Spirit. You, you received the word, but he didn't. In your mind, you really didn't take it with you. You, let, you maybe took it a little bit with you and wanted to implant it in your heart. But listen to me. Your mind really didn't stay on the word of God. It started staying, getting shifted to the business of your week. It started getting shifted off of things 
in, of God and it got shifted into the things of the world. And we wonder why we're not growing. And we wonder why we're not any spiritually stronger than we were last year. What's the difference in the last 10 years of your life? And we wonder why we're not growing. Because Satan is leaving the Word of God in the church on a screen. Okay, Or we take it with us and we don't implant it and nurture it and focus on it and it comes up. But then it, when life hits us, it just kind of gets dies out. The seed sprouted, but it never produces. Or we take it with us and we focus on the Word of God, but then the cares and the sins of the world get our eyes off the seed and we stop taking care of the seed and things just fall to pieces in our lives. Or, here's the plan. And this is why I love the song that they sang from gardens or graves to gardens. You understand, without the word of God in your life, there is no seed. There's nothing to grow in your life. Without the word of God happening in you, there's nothing sprouting up, growing in your life. And so, Graves is where Satan has us. If he can keep you away from implanting the word of God, your life will be a desert. Your life will be a grave. There will be no power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You will not make a difference for God. You'll go on and you'll raise children that act just like you do. And you'll raise grandchildren that act just like you do. They don't know any more about the Word of God than you do because Satan snatched it from you and you allowed that to happen. And you didn't nurture it. You let it. You, the heart of your soul wasn't ready for it. And you let the cares of the world and you're raising generations just like you. Satan's doing that to you. And sir, do you think it's about time you figure that out? Ma'am, isn't it about time that we stop letting Satan control how the word comes in us or not? I think it's time, listen to me, that the church be restructured. That the word of God not just be spoke and scattered out across the ground and bounced up for Satan to snatch it away from us. I think it's time that we become farmers and we control that seed and we nurture that seed and we plant that seed. Here's what God wants. Look at the next verse. And they withered because there was no root. Then other seeds fell among the thorns which they grew up and they were choked in the plants. And look at the last verse. It said, still though, this is what God wants and this is what can happen in our lives today. But still there was another seed that fell on good soil. Somebody say good soil. We got to pray that our hearts and our minds and our soul are ready today for good soil. To be good soil. To implant this seed and it's going to grow right to be good soil, that there, there it produced a crop. And that's what the Lord wants in his cause of his word. And look at it. Not just a little production. We're talking about a hundred and some 60 and some 30 times, 30 fold uh, that is sown. And, and that he says, whoever has an ear, let him hear. Let us hear. He's talking about the good soil, the soil of the heart, the soil of the soul, the soil of the mind, and how we receive the Word of God. And He wants us to produce. When we receive the Word of God, it is to bring producing in our life. Can I get a good amen? It's supposed to produce. It's supposed to grow. Not just a little bit. How many of y'all want a hundred times get better? Let me hear you say amen. <laughs> How many of y'all want to get 60 times better? Let me hear you say amen. I'll say amen to 30 times better. Amen. He wants us to produce more than just ourselves. I, I, I want to reach 30 more souls for Jesus Christ. I want to make 60 times more difference than one man can do through, because I'm obedient and I grow in the word a hundred times, a thousand times, full. 
because the word of God grows us. So that's why I love that song, From Graves to Gardens. That's what I'm calling this message. And Satan's been doing these three things that Jesus is warning us about for years. Amen? Me too. Now, I'm not. I'm not uh, I'm always kidding with y'all. Say, if you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you do is stop digging. Amen? I'm in this hole with you. There's not a time that the Word of God doesn't try to get, Satan doesn't try to snatch it away from me. He says we're to hide the Word of God in our hearts so that we won't sin against it. I have to take pain-taking efforts to memorize as stupid as I am. <laughs> I promise you, if I can memorize the Scripture, you can do it at least two times as good as me. <laughs> at least. Uh, yesterday morning, I was doing my normal deal, and I walk out, and uh, I was... Walking out and walking through some cows and looking at them, went out to the barn, fed the dogs, and just counting, you know, looking at ear tags. And I was walking back up to the house. And I, and I walked up a fence in the backyard, and I stepped over that fence, and there was Miss Robin's garden. Now, I'll tell you, we got the best garden we've ever had and since we've been married. And Robin works on this every year, and we're constantly trying to make that soil fertile right there she we got game chickens around the ranch and uh and they keep all the poop piles tore up and the flies ain't bad around the house chickens but they'll eat the snot out of your vegetables so the first thing did robin did is she had me build a fence and i said oh come on now we would plant those seeds and the chickens would dig, smell them and they dig the seeds up and they'd be gone snatch them just like old devil does you and me with the word of God first thing she did is she had me build a fence around her garden after we got it plowed up second thing she did is she made she had me she got some of that black tarp that you can put down to control the weeds and so she's focusing on this and I'm, look at these steps that she took she prepared the ground look at it she prepared the ground she put nutrients in the ground had me and Jim out there tilling that stuff up, pulling the rocks out, getting it deep where the moisture could get down there. And then she protected the ground from the weeds coming up. And, she, and the chickens, she built a fence. And she put that black tarp all over the, the deal. And then she, the next thing she did is she went to the store and got her some miracle Grow seed starter. I can tell you one thing, that stuff works. And she got some organic seeds. And then she, she picked these seeds carefully and she planned what she wanted to do. And these were good organic seeds. And, and she had these little black trays. And she put, carefully put the right amount of dirt in every single tray. And then she implanted. Somebody say implanted. She, with determination, implanted it into that soil, pushed it down, covered it up. And then she watered it every day. She didn't see nothing happening at first. And then she'd see that soil start breaking up. And then you'd see something green popping out. And then she didn't stop right there. And she didn't leave it alone either. She looked at it every day. And if she couldn't water, she asked me to go water it. And she had a water jug. She made it easy. And she'd water over in plants. And she protected them. She'd set them, scoot them out on the front porch out in the sun. And if it got too hot, she'd pull them back out of the sun. She focused on them seeds every day until they did just about everything that they could do. So she implanted. Number four, she then, look at this, transplanted them from a little container over into the garden. She planted them in the garden. And so she went out there and we cut a little X in that black tarp. That was laid down to keep the weeds from coming up. And she dug down in there and loosened the soil up all over again. And she took all that, that seed starting soil and implanted it down in there to give some extra nutrients to the seed down in there. And then she began to water that. 
at times, and then she would get that miracle grow and that water hose stuff, you know, and she would not just give them water, but she would give them nutrients. And, and I had a fertilizer on a spoon, and we put it on each plant, you know, and she did all this care, and these plants began to grow. And some of them died, and she replaced them. Every, even down to the purple hole peas, she planted every single purple hole pea. I ain't never done that in my life. She planted every single plant in a black little deal and transplanted it in the ground. And she began to nurture that. And so she transplanted, she nurtured it, she watered it, put more fertilizer. And son, I'm telling you, we getting some vegetables. <laughs> we getting some vegetables. And they's good. We got one tomato plant. I tried not to exaggerate because I exaggerate. <laughs> I did. I walked up to it this morning, and that tomato plant is taller than I can reach. Amen. Amen. I, I can't reach the top of that tomato plant. We started with stakes about that tall, and it, it, it got so heavy it broke them. We picked it back up. And then I got a six-foot stake, and I said, there ain't no way, and I hammered it in the ground about this far. And then he was about to break that over. I went and got me a T-post. <laughs> I cowboyed up on that tomato plant now. I'm talking about a full-grown six-and-a-half-foot T-post. And I tied all them other stuff. And that thing's still going. And there's all these tomatoes hanging all over the place on that thing. This morning before we came to church, last night before we went to bed, Robin went in there and turned the timer on the microwave. And turn the water on a sprinkler system. She had it timed. You know what she did this morning? Same thing. Went out there. Everybody's peas are dying, not the ones at Little Herbie Ranch. <laughs> They're blooming for a second time, son. And you can see, though, in the corners ever where the water's not getting quiet as much as some of the, 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 the... There's a pepper plant over here in the corner that's not growing. There's beans over here not growing quite as good as the ones in the middle getting all the nutrients. And they're producing. Here's my question to you. God wants us to handle the seed of the word of God the way Miss Robin is handling a garden that's going to produce God wants to take graves and turn them into gardens and it's going to happen the way you handle the seed of the word of God today what you walk out of here with a couple of scriptures I want to give you and I want to give you a challenge in Matthew 21 43 why do we need to do this? Matthew, look at it. 21, 43. Y'all need to circle this. Or if you got your iPhones, you need to highlight it. If you don't think this is not important, you need to read what God says here. Matthew 21, 43. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given, this is Jesus, and given to people who will produce its fruit. If you're not going to produce, if you're not going to implant the Word of God in your life, if you're not going to nurture it, if you're not going to transplant it from your heart, implant it in your heart and transplant it into your life and apply it and do it, and if you're not going to produce for the kingdom of God, Jesus said, I'm going to take the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. And he says, I'm going to give it to a people who will produce fruit. That's what Jesus said. So he said in Matthew 13, where we started from, he says, still other seeds fell in good soil. And they produce a crop a hundred and sixty and thirty times was the soil. He says, if you're going to hear, he that has an ear, let him hear. Now, here's my challenge for you today. 
There's not a person in here that doesn't know. I don't have to tell you. There's a scripture that you know you, you wish you could do. You know if you could apply that in your life, it would overcome some sin in your life. You know that if you could hide the word of God, and you know if you could do that, it would totally uh, change your financial structure in your home and your savings. You know if you could be obedient with that one scripture, it would honor God with your life, with your marriage and your relationships. You know if you could do that one scripture, it would make a great difference and impact and you know that you need to do that. Every single person here needs to pick here's my challenge, one scripture that you want to do to honor God. And look at this. My challenge is to you is plant a seed and grow it. But you pick it. You pick the seed. You pick the scripture in the Bible. <laughs> pick a seed and grow it. Just one seed. Just one scripture. Pick a seed and do these same six things that Robin did with her garden. You prepare the soil. You pray, God, prepare my heart, prepare my soul, prepare my mind to receive the word of God. Protect those things in my life that's going to keep me from turning away from God and getting distracted. And don't let the weeds, and you may be hanging around some weeds. <laughs> they got two legs that are dragging you down. So you protect, you separate, you, separate you, you protect that seed. You implant and you pray and you memorize and you write and you, you look at that scripture over and over again. You look at that seed like Robin looked at the, in that key. You plant, you plant it, you pray over it. You put it in your life, you implant it, and then you transplant it into your life where people can start seeing it grow in you, and then you nurture it, and you continue to focus on it, and you water, and you fertilize it, and one day you will produce. And that's my challenge for you this week, is that you pick a scripture, you pick a seed, and grow it. Amen? Can y'all do that with me? Let me hear you say a big old Amen. Let me hear you say a bigger amen. Because we want, how many of y'all want a hundredfold blessing? Say amen. A 60-fold, a 30-fold. We want to get that much better. And one scripture, he doesn't say a bunch of scriptures. He says one seed can produce a hundred or sixty or thirty times blessing. And you pick your one scripture that God lays on your heart. And you focus on that scripture and don't walk away. You know what will begin to happen? Woo, this is spaghetti sauce. You'll begin to produce. I'm, I'm just saying, that's the best spaghetti sauce on the planet. And it come out of our garden. All the herbs, everything come out of our garden. Woo-wee. These peppers crunch when you chew on them. Ain't like what you buy in a store. You'll start to produce. These are some, those tomato plants, tomatoes. You'll begin to produce young men and young women that are making a difference in this world. You'll produce a family that'll scatter and make a difference in this world. You'll begin to produce employees, people that you work with, who come to church with you. And you'll begin to produce some things. You'll produce some fruit. If you take that challenge right there. You will honor God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. I just want to come to you and, and just say we receive your word. We receive right now from you what the Holy Spirit has showed us. That all these ways that Satan is trying to snatch the word of God. He, and we just commit to you today that this scripture is not going to stay in this church. <laughs> We, we implant it in our word, in the word of God in our hearts. We don't want you to give it, the kingdom of God, to somebody else. It's for us. We are going to produce. We commit to you where we haven't been taking the word of God and we're not producing and we're not focused on your word. Lord, forgive us. And just say that, God, I'm sorry. I, I know better. Tell him that. Get real with him. I know better, God. I've taken your word, and 
and I've let the cares of this world choke it out of my life. I haven't focused on it. I haven't watered it. I haven't prepared my heart, my soul, my mind. It hasn't stayed on your word. I've let the old devil even rob it for me in church and not take it with me. And I'm just saying, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. God, give me the grace. Give me the strength. Right now. Right now, Lord. To honor you with the seed I pick this week. Still, I just everybody just as still as possible. There's a man, a woman, a young person here today, someone listening to me online. I don't know where you're at. But you know that if you were to die right now, you don't have an assurance in your life whether you go to heaven or hell. I've been addressing the way a Christian's supposed to act, and there's something much stronger in your spirit right now. The Lord is speaking to you. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, he says, he'll open the door. If you open the door of your life and invite Jesus in, he says, he'll come in. He says, he'll forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all your unrighteousness. He will fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit. And if you know that change needs to happen in your life, right where you're at, just bow your head. If you're sitting in front of a TV, if you're here in this service, say, Jesus, today... I give my life to you. Change my life from gardens to a garden that you've made. My life right now has been a, like a desert. My life is like a dried up grave. Take my life that was headed to hell in a grave and change it to a garden that produces for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Let's stand together.